Nature's first green is gold, as Robert Frost declares, but if you want to have early greens growing, you may want to start them before the first golden daffodils bloom, either indoors or outdoors directly on the spot you want to have them growing with the help of a cold frame. Collard greens, kale, arugula, and Swiss chard are cold hardy leafy greens that will tolerate light frosts. I was sowing them a bit later than I would like to, since it had taken me a while to have this bed ready. It was the end of March, so I didn't need to protect the seedlings at all as the weather was already warming up in my new Zone 7 garden. If you live in the south, you may have to sow them even earlier, or even during the fall in warmer states, to have them grow in the cooler winter weather. I was more worried about possible drying of the seedlings and not so much any potential deep frost. At the moment, I didn't have available grass clippings for this new bed, but the rather constant spring rains were encouraging. I planted the kale closer to the center, and then the Swiss chard here towards the back, north end. I'll leave the south end for smaller things, so the Swiss chard, since they have bigger root, bigger seeds, it's easier to plant them directly and actually I, I would say that for Swiss chard I recommend growing it directly, sowing it directly instead of pre-sprouting. I think it works better. Because it's bigger, it won't shade out the other the other plants. The kale I I intend to actually harvest it big um, smaller as smaller greens. So it'll be medium sized perhaps and then on the front I'll put the arugula I will eventually close in this this enclosure here um, and arugula doesn't need to be protected from groundhogs at least in my experience it seems like they don't bother it so I shouldn't be wasting space of this bed with arugula but because I will probably be planting other beds later on, and this is the first one, I'll just get a first crop of arugula, eat it as small greens, and then plant something else even. Maybe cucumber or beans. We'll see. But for the Swiss chard, I'm just planting them about, what, two inches from each other, direct sowing, and that's it. I just cover, put the seed and cover the ground. I don't quite understand why groundhogs have never attacked my arugula. Of course, I'm happy that's the case, but it still makes me curious. It could be because of arugula's spicy taste. In general, it seems that groundhogs don't like the pungent greens or aromatic vegetables like herbs or onion and garlic. They do love the kale and collards, and in my experience, it is precisely these plants that function as magnets for groundhogs. If you have groundhogs in your area and you plant kale without protection, you may have them learn that your garden can be their pantry. And while they are not very bright, they seem to have an excellent memory of where they can get food. My plan was to grow a quick arugula batch to harvest in a few weeks and then clear the area to plant something else in its spot. This way I could maximize my garden space. Whenever I'm sowing seeds, I can never not think about the idea of potential. When we're sowing in spring, we think that everything is gonna happen as we plan and everything is gonna work out. Many times it does not and same thing in life. But if you keep trying, keep sowing, keep going on, one day you do get to reap at least something. And while this is not a hard and fast rule of life, it is what generally happens. You can usually only reap what has been sown, either by you or by somebody else. The groundhogs in my last garden knew this very well. And it's not just sowing or reaping good things. If you sow bad things, chances are bad things you will reap. So it's always a good day to sow some good seed.
If we want to see a better world around us, we must sow seeds of hope, love, and positive change, even if we never get to harvest them. We'll be right back after this commercial. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring, so thank you. Sun exposure is the most valuable resource in my garden. That is because I live in a temperate climate a bit far from the equator. We have good soil and plenty of rainfall. So the limiting factor for an increased harvest for me tends to be solar exposure. This garden is in a south facing slope, but a few fast growing trees have established themselves in front of it throwing shade. This is the sunniest area. It's the south facing aspect of the house. There are way too many trees still here. I need to cut them. I'm gonna try to cut them slowly, but the best time to cut trees is actually right now, early spring when there are no leaves and you can see clearly everything and there's no underbrush. It's a good idea to pull up your socks over your, your pants because when you're in this kind of a terrain, you definitely might be in tick territory and that's bad for Lyme disease, especially here in the Eastern seaboard. So be mindful of that. But if you're in a place that, that doesn't have ticks, I wouldn't be too worried. All of this weedy undergrowth has been established through neglect. Getting to tame this would take some patience. These fast growing wild trees had to be cut down to allow me to grow other more valuable garden plants. There were some remnants of cultivated plants like the daffodils, survivors of an old garden. So I wanted to clear the aggressive weed like plants to refresh it. I think that doing this type of work slowly, a bit at a time, makes the whole endeavor more manageable. Also, I knew that my gardening time would be more limited this first growing season, so I didn't want to bite more than I can chew. I think this type of saw is pretty neat to do this job. Um, you could use lopers, but lopers can only cut up to uh, 2 inches, so this is much more versatile and it cuts fast, surprisingly. I prefer to use hand tools whenever possible because besides being usually safer, working with them is more peaceful and much less noisy. And since I was only cutting relatively small trees, this saw was perfect. What I just did there is very much bad form, I'm sure. I am no expert in tree removal, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but I'm absolutely sure you're not supposed to cut a limb over your head, sort of. Um, it could really backfire and fall on you and hurt your head, uh, but since I knew this was a very thin, manageable piece of a limb, I, I was confident enough to do that, but it would be better and safer to cut things below your head, I suppose. Perhaps use a ladder if you need to. A strong one and maybe somebody holding it. Just be mindful where the branch falls. In order to work safely, don't rush. Have patience and work at a steady pace. That can be a mistake of enthusiastic first-time gardeners making pharaonic plants. Slowly expanding your garden as your garden knowledge and experience grows is always wise. Also, if you're tired, just rest, especially if you plan to use a chainsaw. Working with power tools is certainly quicker, but when you stop to think about it, just a hundred years ago, people would even clear cut entire old growth forests with just hand saws and axes. It was back breaking work, but it was a testament to human power. My plan was to get this front side of the garden cleared from these low quality trees to grow ornamental flowers as well as edible crops. Maybe even a fig tree would do very well in the south facing position. The soil in the slope looks rich and well drained. My dream is to have a nice, beautiful, partially edible garden in my front yard, expanding on the cottage style garden I have developed in the last place. It will take some time to develop, but I feel it will be worth it in the end. So here's the aftermath of the first phase, day one. I have a, a lot of branches that I have to deal with. 
I'm going to do this in stages just so I don't get too tired. I think it's always best to do hard labor a little bit at a time. Um, cutting things with power tools is tiresome, different from using gas-powered um, cutting machines. But the one thing that's interesting is that you get to work more in nature. You don't have the noise. You, you feel a little bit more connected. Now, what I'm gonna do with these, I'm already thinking, having ideas of structures I could build, build with these. But for now, I just have to clean up the yard a bit, pile them in a corner there. And then return some other day to continue cutting these trees. I did cut one tree using a ladder. It's a little bit more complicated, but I'll definitely have to do that for the lar slightly larger ones. But again, just slowly, a little bit at a time, you'll be able to do an effective job that's also safe. Clearly, there was still a lot to do to achieve my dream garden. I would certainly have to use a ladder to help clear the other small trees. For now, I would just stack up all the biomass on a corner of the garden to let it decompose naturally, enriching the soil. I also plan to use some of the sticks and branches in my garden as plant supports. I would consider these as future resources instead of garden waste. Slowly, my garden dream would start to materialize before me. I invite you on this journey of creation.